Hello my lovelies, welcome to your Ascension Oracle messages for the New Moon in Libra on the 28th of September. I have some cards for you, and uh, various different packs, and again I've asked the universe for a word. May I have a word please? Um, and it, it's two, last time it was three, and this time it is two. Um, and interestingly enough, it's French, but it is from the Collins... Concise English dictionary, and the words are read my writing en famille, which means with the family, um, with one's family, or as or like a family. So, my sense of the energy around the new moon in Libra is to do with family, being with your family, or um, being with people who are like your family. So it is said we can't choose our family, um, but we can choose our friends. But there's a deeper meaning to this in that this is our soul family. It's uh, uh, drawing to you people who are of a like soul, not just a like mind, um, not who just likes the same things that you might like, but this is um, calling in the soul family, the soul tribe. Um, your spirit family, your space family, um, your 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 team. Those that are working with you throughout this lifetime uh, to help you to manifest those things that you came here um, to manifest, or to oh okay, so also to help you to resolve things um, from previous lifetimes, previous existences, um, and to work with them rather than against. Um, Maybe your birth family, your um, uh, your bloodline, how you have been brought up. Um, and in a previous video, I did a an intuitive energy clearing for the bloodline, the family bloodline, um, looking at various uh, patterns that we have, um, various beliefs, various programming that we bring through um, from various family members and and from other lifetimes. So. I feel that the energy of this new moon, uh, new moons being new beginnings and how we um, uh, work towards planting seeds for um, our long-term future as well as the short term. And it's interesting the other cards that have come up because there is a balance. There's, there's a very definite um, need, I would call it, to feel yourself... Um, uh, not tied into any old um, family dramas or traumas or um, it's like being called back into um, say there's a family reunion and part of you wants to go and see how everybody's doing and meet up with loved ones again but there might, might be another part of you which is dreading it and says oh god no I I can't bear to be around Auntie Flo because um, all she does is talk about doom and gloom um, and always questioning me as to why I'm not married, why I haven't got children, um, why I haven't settled down yet um, and all those sorts of things. Um, and I thought, well, <laughs> look at how the rest of the family has turned out. Um, or there might be that creepy Uncle um, John who's... Um, you know, got wandering hands, that sort of thing. So um, there seems to be so much um, in the collective at the moment about clearing things, about breaking patterns, about um, purging. And uh, the word purging is it sounds um, quite awful, really, that um, when you purge, um, it's like you were ridding yourself of um, toxins and poisons, etc., in your body. And, and that's what we are doing. We are ridding ourselves of old um, toxic thoughts, toxic relationships, um, things that we've he held, held on to very tightly um, and have found it very difficult to let go of. Um, so I'm going to jump to um, this card, which is from the Wisdom of the um, Avalon. And it is forgiveness. 
and that's something that all of us find extremely difficult to do um, to forgive others for slights for wounds for heartbreak um, for anything that we've experienced at the hands and or the mouths of um, others what people have said to us or done to us etc etc throughout our lives um, and I struggled with this for a very long time and then I came across um, a little set of cards and it was um, no pictures on it just some words and it said love is for giving so giving love that's how we clear um, any resentment any bitterness um, any of those negative emotions that we hold on to and in the act of forgiving we release ourselves so if we if we find that there's um we've been wounded or hurt by someone in this lifetime when we hold on to bitterness or resentment or unforgiveness towards them it is us who suffers the other person may be completely unaware that that's how they've affected you so there is a um a hawaiian um little ceremony you can do and i just discovered recently it originated in um polynesia and it's it is called ho opono pono and you can google it it's h o apostrophe o p o n o apostrophe p o n o um and it is a four line um stanza and it says, please forgive me, I'm sorry, I love you, thank you. So you're asking forgiveness of the other person, more to do with their soul essence, um, rather than the person themselves, because we all create our own reality. So whatever it is we experience, we bring things to us, and then we project our anger or our bitterness or our resentment onto the other person. Um, but we are part of that scenario in the first place. So when you repeat ho opono pono, please forgive me, I'm sorry, I love you, thank you. And you say it over and over and over again. You say it silently, you say it out loud, um, not necessarily to the actual person, because you're working at another level here. And it works to clear energies between you whether that person is still in their physical body or not. And it just lifts you out of that lower vibrational fear-based ego stuff, which prevents us from moving forward in life. And you may find that when you hold unforgiveness, you would just keep repeating that same pattern. It might not be with the same person. Other people will show up, but they will step into the role and they will present it to you and you think oh here we go again so have a go with it work with it please forgive me i'm sorry i love you thank you please forgive me i'm sorry i love you thank you i bung on the bless you on the end as well so please forgive me i'm sorry i love you thank you bless you you can write it out stick it on your fridge or post-it notes or whatever just to remind you um because if we go through our days holding on to what the other person did to me. Um, we're just building up these toxins and these um, poisons in your own body, in your own mind, and you cannot draw to you, or find it very difficult to draw to you, someone who doesn't carry that um, same vibration. So in this card of uh, forgiveness it's interesting we have all of these mushrooms come, coming up through the ground so this is things that are hidden mushrooms usually come up very suddenly and it needs to be in a damp um, dark area and they can come up overnight and they look like little umbrellas don't they so 
So if you can see the um, the correlation, the energy of a mushroom, it has to start in the dark. And that's where we can take ourselves when we're feeling um, self-pity, when we're feeling wounded, when we're feeling hurt by others. And you keep all of that deep within you, in your shadow side, in your darkness. But when you let it out to the light, it comes up through the um, the shadows and it shows itself to the sun, to the light, and it opens and it spreads like an umbrella. That is a way of shielding you from um, further hurt, further um, wounds in the future from anybody else. And it helps you to delete that program or that belief system within you. And then to balance that out, daytime. So this is from the uh, messages from the mermaids and the dolphins. And as you can see here, the beautiful dolphins playing with the mermaids, ducking and diving. Daytime. And sometimes we get so serious about life, we forget to play. So there may be issues around you at the moment where um, you can't allow yourself to play because you're holding on to sort of negative thoughts about a person or a situation. Um, I get the sense that for some of you it might be um, you've lost your job. Some, some of you might possibly have been fired or um, uh, given notice um, and you might be feeling hurt and wounded about that. But my underlying sense of that is your soul didn't want you to be there. There's something better coming in, which is much more playful, much more joyful, much more full of fun and laughter and lightness. So when we're working in an environment where there's shadow, where there's um, uh, sort of lower vibrational energies and there's backbiting and there's um, backstabbing and there's people um, envious and jealous and wanting to um, make you out to be wrong. The, the longer you stay in that environment, the harder it will be for you to release yourself from that and to draw in this sort of energy. So the angel card is release. Where's the angel card? There we are, release. And if you look, it's an angel saying goodbye to the school bus. So in a way this is the kids going off to school and you're going, yay, they go back to school, yay, I've got some free time, I can I can really do what I want to do. Um this can also be releasing you from a sense of duty or a sense of um well oh, I have to stay in this job because it, it pays the bills and um when I find something else, then I'll leave. Um, but it's the other way around. The longer you hang on to something that is negative, the longer it will take you to find something that does please you, something that does bring you joy. So the energy of this new moon in Libra is about release. Surrender and release. Let go. Just let go and allow the universe to bring you something much more fun, much more enjoyable, um, and again, going back to the forgiveness, forgiving yourself, um, not beating yourself up over anything, saying, oh, um, I'd really like to be doing something else, but I have to stick in this grotty job, which I really hate. And it says with the playtime with the dolphins, the dolphins know the importance of playing as joy creates miracles and manifestation. So find some time over this um period of the new moon it's on Saturday um, so over the weekend um, don't lock yourself away at home and um, grizzle over things and um, um, chew it over and spit it out and tell everybody else about it 
go out, go out and play, find somewhere to play, someone to play with. Um, I think one of the best things is um, be like a child. So if you've got kids or you've got kids around, you know people with kids, get down on the floor with them and play, whatever it is, or go out, uh, run around the park, jump in the puddles, um, and just be like them. So they live in the moment, they live in the now, they don't think about tomorrow, they don't think about the next moment, they just live in the moment and they get, get as dirty as possible and they don't care. They just don't care whether they get um, get their clothes mucky or um, just when people start yelling at them, don't do that, don't do that, you'll get your clothes dirty. What does it matter? It doesn't matter. Go in the washing machine. Um, so it's not getting too prissy about how you look, how you're dressed. Um, Tap into that part of you that is the child. When you did have fun, when you knew you just spontaneously did something. Um, and another lovely thing I like to do when, I, when I'm teaching my workshops, um, and we do work with regard to the inner child, um, which might have been wounded. Um, and if you allow yourself to carry that wound throughout your adulthood, um, it stops you having fun. So what I do is I bring in some colouring books. And not those precise ones, you know, that they've got for adults. And the kids, colouring books and some felt tip pens. You get over the edges if you want to. Um, and just colour in. Just colour it in. Um, and we also do musical chairs. Um, and we also um, blow up balloons and squeak them. And just do lovely, lovely um, childish things. Well, you just giggle and you giggle and you giggle and you giggle so much it hurt and you giggle some more um and just being in that moment so this necessity for balancing things out libra libra new moon the scales harmony um and on the bottom of the wisdom of avalon pack is joy a sense of joy So there's this, um, I think it's a bucket, hang on, have a look. It's a rock, it's a rock, and on that rock is engraved the sunshine, pure joy, fun, laughter, play, joyfulness. As you see there's a little pathway which can lead to who knows where. So it's taking a new taking a new path, stepping onto a new pathway um, with joy rather than with anticipation or anxiety. Um, you won't believe how many jobs I've had in my lifetime. I've moved 56 times, I think it is. I might have lost count, actually. Um, and I've lived in other countries. And um, uh, But this probably won't be my last... Um, residents, I just get itchy feet and upstairs says, right, off we go, pack up again and um, let's go and see what shows up this time. Um, and yeah, and the jobs, <laughs> yeah, I've tried all sorts. I have tried all sorts. Um, this is my favourite though. This, this is my, uh, this is what brings me joy. This is what I love to play with and um, gives me happiness and I can ramble on and <laughs> think. People might watch this, people might not, but hey, you know, I'm having a good time. I'm really enjoying myself and hopefully you are too. Um, so out of all of these, um, um, trying to balance things in your life, the self-mastery card is purpose. It's finding a purpose, finding your life purpose. So if you're stuck in a dead-end job and you're thinking, why did I come here into this physical body? What am I meant to be doing? What is the reason for all of this? Um, and so the purpose says, as a master, I am motivated by the meaning of my life, persevering regardless of all obstacles. I never deviate. So the meaning of your life might at the moment be um, clouded to you. You might not be able to see um, or feel what the purpose is, but you know darn well what you're doing is not the purpose. It's leading you to it, 
um, by you being aware of what you don't want to do. So when you put it out there and say, right, bring to me what is mine, what I'm meant to be doing in this lifetime. So with a new moon, you can write out some new moon wishes. And because we had um, the word en famille, with the family, you can call in your soul family, your soul tribe. Because uh, they're always with us. They're always around us. Um, uh, you might have a high-pitched fuzzy noise in your ear. Could be either ear. I know when my left ear goes like this. Okay, pay attention. Um, I need to either see what's going on around me or listen to what's going on around me um, or listen within because there might be a message coming through. Um, <laughs> there's one there. Uh, yes, Debbie, my, my baby angel girl. Um, uh, and if you're sort of new to this way of looking at things in your life, then you can do a little test and, and, and say, well, right, um, so start off with something small, if you like, and say, right, show me, prove it. Prove that this stuff isn't all woo-woo and, and a load of old what's-its. Um, show me what my life purpose is. Now, we can figure out your um, life path or your life purpose for your date of birth. So in numerology, I would add up your date of birth, reduce it to one number, unless it is... Um, a master number, like 11, 22, 33. And from that, we can glean what your life purpose is. So if you're interested in a session with me, details in the box below. Um, and also that what I've found in um, working with people over the years is, um, apart from a like a one-to-one -one reading, if I'm doing a treatment on someone, um, it's like they're disconnected from their life purpose. Um, we have everything inside of us that we need um, in our lifetime um, and it's just um, activating that dormant uh, part of us um, and just bringing that to life. So that's another thing you can ask me about. Um, I per persevere regardless of all obstacles. Obstacles can also be um, challenges, um, lessons learned. Uh, and then in the last couple of weeks, I've had very interesting ob obstacles or challenges or lessons learned. Um, and rather than, um, oh, no, I don't want to look at that. that that's that's too hard. That's too, um, um, I don't want to go there and um, uh, look at that. It's been brought up for me to have a look at, to acknowledge and to clear it and to heal it. And then let it go, um, especially with regard to more family, my own family, my own bloodline, my own um, siblings, aunties, uncles, and their history, their patterns, their um, oh deeply held um, belief systems, and how I have had to knock it on the head because I am not carrying those patterns for them. I've had to, to work hard to delete them to say, um, yes, they might be my family, my um, bloodline. But those patterns, those uh, that programming, those imprints are not carrying those. They're not a part of who I came here to be. Um, I played those roles for a very long time in my life. Um, pleasing others, being a doormat, um, doing what I thought others expected of me. And then when I screeched to a halt, I thought, oh, I've not been true to myself. I need to be true um, to my purpose, my life purpose. So I'll press the eject button, the release, you know, in um, old James Bond's car. What's that, what's that red button for? <laughs> Press it, and up I went. Um, and um, yes, I ejected. Um, I ejected myself from my family bloodline, really, I suppose. Um, and I just took off in a completely different direction. 
um, it's sad, it was painful, but it was necessary. Um, and for some of you, finding your life purpose might mean that you need to eject um, from a situation in your life. Um, you might need to press that red button. You know, it gets to a point where you think, I can't go on like this. I have to do something about this. Um, um, which path do I take? And then it's asking your spirit family, soul family, soul tribe, help me with this. Show me the, show me the signs. Show me the pathway which leads me to this, to joy. And so I have chosen a animal medicine card. And this is interesting. This is ant medicine. So 32, it's number 32, and which adds up to five. And five is a number of adventure. It's constructive freedom. So it's been able to construct or build or make a life doing what you want to do and giving you a sense of freedom. So if you've just been plodding along and plodding along and plodding along, um, thinking, when is this ever going to end? It's putting out there to the universe and making a statement. It ends here. It ends here. I will no longer carry this pattern this burden, this belief system, this imprint, this programming. I do not claim it as mine. I release it, I surrender it, I let it go. And the universe doesn't like um, vacuums, so it will deliver something to you in its place. There might be a it's almost like breathing in and breathing out. There might be a little gap in between. Um, so when sometimes when we meditate, when we breathe in, we continue to breathe in until you can't breathe in anymore, and then you hold it. Then you release, you let it go, you breathe out. So it's like the space between the spaces of things. And when you give yourself that gift of um, self-care, through meditating, through breathing properly, the space between the spaces is when you hear it. And that's when the universe can deliver things to you. So the ant, little mini ant card, it's about patience. <laughs> They're all, all grant me patience, but please hurry up about it. Um, so it says, be patient, honour the present moment and find joy in the now. So patience is also a skill. It's a mindset. It's a, an ability to wait, um, but not necessarily wait, holding your breath um, and not doing anything. It's to do with the divine timing. So when things show up at the right time for you um, and honouring the present moment. So like I said about the kids, being like a child, honour the present moment, be in the now and play. Get down and boogie. Go and have fun. Um, whether you like to go on a roller coaster and scare yourself silly or um, you go to a kid's movie um, or take some kids to a kid's movie. However you like to um, feel comfortable and um, not care about what anybody thinks, what anybody says, what anybody does, whether they get messy or not. <laughs> One of my darling aunts used to drop off my two cousins to our house when I was little. Um, and <laughs> they were always dressed in white. They had white socks, white shoes, white shorts or trousers, um, white shirts, little dicky bows, hair slicked back, you know, spit curls and stuff. Um, and she said, now behave yourselves, be good boys while I'm gone and I'll pick you up at four o'clock. <laughs> Poor little souls. And they were not allowed to get dirty. 
she wanted to pick them up looking as pristine as we did when we dropped them off. So as soon as the car had gone off around the corner, my mum whipped off their clothes, gave them my brother's um, cast-offs, which were a bit big for them, but, you know, we rolled up the sleeves and the trousy legs and threw us all out in the garden to play. And they got filthy. And we had such fun. Cowboys and Indians, you know. And about half an hour before mum was due to come and pick them up, my mother <laughs> shoved them in the bath, give them a good scrub, put their nice clean white clothes back on. Um, Auntie picked them up and knew nothing about it. Did you have a lovely time? Was oh yes, mummy, we did. We had a lovely time. Thank you. You know, we hope to come again. Um, but she never, <laughs> she never knew that her two boys got absolutely. They enjoyed themselves. They're such fun. And her, um, where she was coming from was, you know, you have to look like this. You have to dress like this. You mustn't get yourself dirty. You mustn't be a child. You mustn't play. You mustn't, you know, don't get care tuppence about whether you get your clothes dirty or not. So, um, don't get, don't, it doesn't matter what you're wearing. Go out and play. Go and get grubby, you know. Um, uh, whatever calls to you this weekend. And you can say to the, um, your soul tribe, your team, uh, thank you for the opportunity to play this weekend. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to really let my hair down um, and to find like-minded others um, where I can really let go. I can just um, get as dirty and as grubby as I like, um, but have the best fun I've had in a very long time. And when you ask that of the universe, something shows up. So you might get a um, a call out of the blue or a text message. Hey, we're going um, um, paintballing at the weekend. Do you want to come along? Or hey, we're going um, quad biking at the weekend. Do you want to come along? Or um, hey, we're going camping in the woods. Do you want to come along? Um, it means not bathing for a couple of days and being a bit stinky, but hey, you know. Um, but finding something that just there are no real hard and fast rules. The only one being have fun. Go and play. Have lots and lots of fun. And come away from that um, uh, with the biggest smile on your face. With the tummy that aches because you laugh so much. And with the ability to look back and say, do you know, I've had such fun in these last couple of days. It makes me see more clearly. I've got clarity. I've found patience. And I'm... As of today, I'm making changes in my life. I'm asking the universe to give me signs, signals, omens, portents as to which path to take. And I know that when it feels good, that's the right thing for me. And I know that when it doesn't feel good, that's not the right thing for me. And I don't give a what other people think. I'm going to find something that brings me joy. I'm going to do things that are fulfilling. I'm going to tap into my life purpose. And for the rest of my days, I'm going to be doing what I came here to do. So I hope that resonates with some of you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. If you'd like to know anything more about weird and wonderful things that I do, the details are in the box below. So lots of love, lots of blessings. See you soon. Bye.